To close out the winter of 1982, we will touch upon a few more territories at the time. Starting with Southeastern Championship Wrestling. Originally based out of Knoxville, Tennessee, where wrestler Ron Fuller took over from his family. He expanded in the late 70s to Alabama and Northern Florida when he purchased Gulf Coast Championship Wrestling. His brother Robert Fuller was the booker, but his perceived lazy nepotism booking would cause a max exodus from wrestlers in 1979 that crippled the Knoxville region financially and made Birmingham, Alabama the main part of the territory. Coming into the winter of 1982, Jacques Rougeau is feuding with Southeastern heavyweight champion Joe LeDuc. The feud would get personal when LeDuc whipped Rougeau with a belt. You're watching videotaped highlights of a match recently at the Houston County Farm Center in Dothan, Alabama, as Jacques Rougeau takes on the Canadian lumberjack Joe LeDuc. What an incredible match, Charlie. I had the chance to be at ringside. Joe LeDuc had been forwarding all the attempts of Jacques Rougeau to catch him with that drop kick off the second rope all night long. Rougeau has finally, finally got through the defenses of the Canadian Lumberjack. Now you see uh, uh, LeDuc, we should say, taking off that uh, big belt he wears. And that belt has been the, the focus of a lot of controversy, Charlie, in the, in the past several weeks, especially Jacques Rougeau, a tremendous match on behalf of Mr. Rougeau. The Canadian Lumberjack has tied him, literally tied him into the ropes here in this this southeastern title match. LeDuc climbing into the ring. Referee Larry Brock doing the very best he can to maintain order. But in a situation like this, there's really nothing a referee can do. Rougeau's neck caught between the first and second ropes. The Canadian Lumberjack whipping Rougeau with that leather belt. Southeastern heavyweight champion is with us, and we have some videotape, Joe. That's right, roll it. We'll talk about a man. The punk has tried to hurt the man, but he can't do it. Just look at him. He's tried to look at all the people and get some cheer. Rojo, you're not here to get cheer. You're here to try to beat me and try to take this belt. Comments you're hearing from the Southeastern heavyweight champion, Joe LaDuke. And uh, here you make use of that belt. I make use of anything, Charlie Platt, because the name of the game is winning. And who's got the belt? The gentleman with me at the desk, Jacques Rougeau, challenges for Joe LaDuke's Southeastern Heavyweight title. Well, thank you, Rick. You know something about Joe LaDuke's attitude that's been changing lately? And I have an opportunity right now in Birmingham, Alabama, to go get his title. It's because he was pretty upset the fact that I beat his record up in Canada. And I was 21 years old when I won the Canadian Heavyweight Champion, the youngest to ever done it, because he was the youngest to ever done it at 23 years old. And I don't think he appreciated that. You know, punk, you're lost when it comes down to get down and dirty and have some guts and knock some nuts. Listen to me, test tube pump pimple face. I got this belt and I'm gonna hang on to it. You hear that? Rougeau would get his revenge when he defeated the Duke for that title. Jimmy Golden, who is a popular wrestler in the territory, is Southern Tag Champions with Robert Fuller. They are feuding with the New Zealand Sheep Herders. The Sheep Herders, with help from Ox Baker, end up injuring Robert Fuller and winning the tag titles. This uh, took place uh, out of a match uh, with the New Zealand Sheep Herders, Robert Fuller and Jimmy Golden as tag team partners. Well, the Southeastern tag title was on the line. If you'll notice Jonathan Boyd in the right hand corner of your screen adjusting his arm strap and handing a little something to Ox Baker on the outside of the ring. Now at this point, the match is over. It's over and uh, your uh, Southeastern tag team champions are the New Zealand Sheep Herders at this point. And uh, here you'll see going to work on that left shoulder. Ox Baker outside the ring, keeping Jimmy Golden, who was stunned from being hit with both championship belts. Golden on the floor fighting Ox Baker as Luke Williams gets Robert Fuller in that chicken wing, draping him over his leg. Now watch, watch the right leg of Jonathan Boyd. Boyd's up on that top rope. 
And this is where the injury to Robert Fuller occurred. This is starting to get a little ridiculous, Golden. First of all, Daddy goes to hospital. Yeah, Secondly, your stupid partner, Robert Fuller, goes to hospital. Now his brother, Ron, is going to oh, try and revenge him. All your family are born losers. And you're going to lose because we're going to be the champions. And we're going to be the champions forever. Hey, Golden, just let me tell you one little thing. You can get whoever you like. Ron Fuller to me is nothing. He only wrestles four times a year in tag matches. We wrestle every day. But Jimmy Golden was not just a tag champ. He was the Alabama heavyweight champion too. Southeastern Championship Wrestling even threw a Jimmy Golden Appreciation Day. We'd like to present you with this plaque. And on behalf of the parent company of Southeastern Wrestling, we're dedicating this entire show as Jimmy Golden Appreciation Day. Jimmy Golden Appreciation Day upset Big Bad Terry Gordy, who was sick of Golden getting all the title shots. Cool Breeze, how's it going, baby? All right, good to see you. Hey, stand up here. Give me a little respect here, okay? Hey, I just come out here to say a few words. I just want to ask you something. Why is this guy here getting a chance at the world's title and I'm not? I've been here for almost a month now and I beat everybody that I've laid my hands on. And the only reason that I haven't beat him yet is because he's too chicken to climb in the ring with me. Oh, yeah. now, wait, a minute, wait a minute, gentlemen. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Mr. Gordy. Mr. Gordy. Mr. Gordy, if you'll pay attention for Mr. Gordy. Mr. Gordy. Mr. Gordy. Mr. Gordy, if you'll pay attention for just one second, a tape was sent for us from International Sports Incorporated several days ago. They asked us if you came to the interview desk to play this for you. If you'll watch the monitor, we have a little something for you here. the southeastern area a man that i traveled up and down the roads with for four long years but terry gordy had problems of his own the year prior in 1981 the freebirds had a huge falling out in georgia with terry gordy going hill on michael hayes michael hayes had come to alabama to get revenge on gordy telling you face to face i got commitments to make but I'm gonna come and I'm gonna get you and you're gonna pay because it is time that people like you and your kind and the Jola Dukes and the other people in my home area are gonna learn a lesson from me, Jack, because Freebird Fantasia is coming home. The man, hey, it's a conspiracy is what it is. Let me tell you something, Michael Hayes. The best thing for you to do, boy, is stay out of my way because I come here to make a name for myself and I come here to collect titles like I'm going to do. Hayes, you know, just like Cool Breeze said here, I've had a lot of run-ins with you, and I've traveled up and down a lot of roads with you before, boy. But right here in Birmingham, it's all going to come to a head. I'm going to make sure that, Michael Hayes, because you've interfered in my business one too many times, and you're going to stay out of my business because my business means a lot to me, boy, and I don't need nobody interfering in my business. Terry Gordy would defeat Jimmy Golden for the Alabama heavyweight title and also focus in on the Southeastern heavyweight champion, Jacques Rougeau. Feet. Gordy powers his man to the ropes, misses with a wild elbow. A rolling package, one, two. Almost a three count. A match between Gordy and Rougeau would go to a new contest when both Hayes and Joe LeDuc 
would interfere. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Michael Hayes hits the ring. Michael Hayes and Kerry Gordon are in the show. Now it's Joe Lanuke. But when NWA world champion Ric Flair came to the territory in the winter, he would be feuding with territory owner Ron Fuller. Ron Fuller had taken prior world champion Harley Race to his limit. Birmingham, Alabama, are you ready? They tell me that in the southeastern part of the United States, Ron Fuller is a legend in his own time. He's beat just about every wrestler to ever come into that area. And as everyone knows, he came damn close to beating a Harley Race on several occasions for this. Now, the money's right, the time is right, and the world champion Ric Flair is coming to Birmingham to face the Tennessee stud, the legend. Well, I like working on legends, Fuller. You see, to me, you're no big deal at all. Yeah, you're six foot nine and you're about 270 pounds. But that just means that you're a whole lot of man for me to work on piece by piece. And you and I, Ric Flair, will be getting it on for the World Heavyweight Championship. It'll be sweet home Alabama time. Stud will be coming home to Alabama, and I will be in Birmingham Monday night. And I've been chasing you, Flair. I've beaten you before. You know, and I know, both of us, that I should be the World Heavyweight Champion. There's going to be no excuses for anybody, either one of us, though, come Monday night. Ron would fall short with Ric Flair. Next, we head over to the Pacific Northwest, for Pacific Northwest Wrestling. Owned by Don Owen, who was known in the territories for being the best payoff promoter because of his fair dealing and on-time payments. When the Pacific Northwest Heavyweight title was vacated at the very start of the winter of 1982, Buzz Sawyer's brother, Brett Sawyer, won a battle royal for the championship. The main heel stable in the territory is Buddy Rose and his army made up of multiple people, but mostly the mainstays Rip Oliver and Matt Bourne. They want the title off of Brett Sawyer and the tag titles off of Rocky Johnson and King Parsons. We are going to take all the championship belts in one night. I lock up. Whoa, go behind. Rolls him up, one, two. Almost got to three. Somebody in the crowd got to him. He dropped the hold and nearly gets pinned on drag slam. Of the playboy, now knee lifts to the stomach. Whip to the far neutral corner. Two minutes to Brings him out of the corner with a monkey flip. Nail him with a drop kick. Yes, sir. You can see that one coming. Rose is tied up in the top two ropes. Well, you see it. You see it. He got the pin. Rocky Johnson would become a huge thorn in the Army's side, stopping them from cheating. Stopping Buddy Rose from cheating Brett Sawyer out of the title. Rocky Johnson demonstrating what happened. Rocky Johnson demonstrating on King Parsons what happened, but he rose, has the belt around his waist. Sandy Barr reverses his decision. Sandy Barr disqualifies Buddy Rose. I will think of something to beat you, Johnson. You just stole the title from me. I had the belt. It was around my waist for 45 seconds, and you opened your mouth and said I used the ropes. Did I beat him the last time in a cage? Did I? I will have to say yes. So if I beat him this time, he's going to go, he said. Bye bye, Rocky Johnson. The Army would cheat to get the tag titles off of Rocky Johnson and King Parsons when Matt Bourne and Rip Oliver beat them for the title. Rocky Johnson and Buddy Rose would get so sick of each other that Johnson would make a cage match where if he lost, he would leave Portland. You said last week if you could get him in the cage, get the army in the jail cage, that you would either beat him or leave the area and go home. 
Now that's a lot to say against Rose. That's exactly what I said, Frank, for the simple reason I'm sick and tired of Rose. I'm fed up. I feel like I let these people down. I had a case with Max with him last time. I kept him in the ring, but I wasn't thinking. His army interfered in that. This way with his army in that cage, that small one, I don't have to worry. I'm saying this. I'm not bragging. I'm putting it straight on the road. The line to your brother. If I don't whip you like the dogs that you are, then you won't have to worry about me here no more. Rocky Johnson would win the cage match. Lastly, we head over to Japan to check out some of the North American talent on tour with All Japan Pro Wrestling in the winter of 1982. Mil Mascaras, the popular wrestler out of Mexico, was in Japan having a variety of matches. A lot were with Sweet Brown Sugar. No, not Coco Beware, but Sweet Brown Sugar Skip Young out of Florida, who was wearing a mask in Japan. Mil Mascaras would also have a tremendous match with Tenru, where Mascaras would put his IWA title on the line. All Japan also had their own women's promotion at the time. And a highlight was Sherry Martel wrestling in the territory and totally taking a beating from Devil Masami. One of the best things in AJPW is owner and promoter Giant Baba teams up a lot in the winter with his partner and fellow international tag champion Jumbo Suruda. It seems like every Baba and Suruda tag match gets personal with their opponents and breaks down into full on fights. <laughs> AWA World Champion Nick Bockwinkle comes to Japan to tag up with Pat O'Connor against Suruta and Giant Baba. But Bachwinkle would tag up with Nikolai Volkov in a title match against the international tag champions. <laughs> Bachwinkle would then put his AWA world title on the line against Jumbo Suruta that would go to a double countout. <laughs> 
ね。そうですね。あのー、この手を休めずに、ねえー、攻撃を続けていくべきですね。ために集中攻撃。星のために集中攻撃。いいぞいいぞ。中華のリズムだ。中華のリズムだ。もう一回。そしてまずまず右腕。そして今度は左の腕を自分の左の肩に乗っていこうという。ししましたジャンプするか頭の上に上げましたさあこのままこのまま後ろに持っていけばフレップバスターしかし回転を加えました飛行機なりエアープレンスピンエアープレンスピンしかし仕掛けましたジャンプ空間も目が回ったようだ目が回ったようだハイカンコンのニックロックインクそしてチャレンジャーのジャンプ空間が2人ともリングの外さあどうだどうだどうだ世界チャンピオンのニックロックインクをリングの外で飛行機投げ飛行機投げ飛行機投げまだまだリングの外で飛行機投げだ回転を加えます回転を加えます And Giant Baba would close out the winter of 1982, putting his PWF heavyweight title on the line against an American that was in Japan very often, Stan Hansen. これは奇襲戦法16枚目馬場の16門か馬場が燃えています大きく左手を使って16も当たった2発目空手狩りの体勢しかしスタンハンズが危ないぞウエスタンダリアに行かないカウンターのエルボー馬場の前に屈しました32門でありますそして右足を合わせますスタンハンズ危ないぞおっと行きますショルダーセブーここがうまいところですベンヤンとババもう一回ロープに振ってスターはいってもウエスタンダリアと飛び飛び様カウンター4ウエスタンダリアットババッとトークスタンダリアット爆発そして場外に飛びながら両方の手を合わせましたババッとして入らなくてはなりません Another giant Baba match that would turn into a brawl and end up in a double DQ when Stan Hansen started to go too far against all Japan rules.